I want this video to work very much in conjunction with the previous videos, the one where we broke down the structure of uh, question one in the composition paper. So in this video, I'm very much going to talk about the structure again, about these parts, the, uh, the given bars, developing those, modulating to the dominant, etc. Except, whereas in the last video I had it all pre-written and I analyzed it, in this one I'm going to do it as a worked example, so you can see it being done for yourself. Alright, so to begin with, this is from the um, 2009 exam paper. And we've been given the first four bars. Now the very first thing I'm going to take note of is our key, our key signature. We've got three flats, and if you've watched our videos on key signatures, you'll know that three flats equals E flat. So we're in the key of E flat major right now. The other thing that I'm going to notice is that we've got an, what's called an anacrusis at the beginning, an upbeat essentially. And that happens before the first bar. It's a, it's a beat that happens before the very first bar. And that's really important because it, it affects every single phrase that we're going to have after this. It affects absolutely everything that comes after it. Most notably, it's going to affect our last bar. So in the last bar, we're, as you can see, we're in 4-4 four, four time. You would assume in the last bar we've got four beats. But actually, because we've got an anacrusis of one beat, we take that one beat, that it's one beat because you can see it's two quavers, make up one beat. We take that one beat away from the four beats at the end. So instead of having four beats in the last bar, we're actually only going to have three. Four, take a, four minus one is three. All right. And as we know, it has to end on Do. It has to end on the note Do, which in this case is E flat. So I'm going to end on E flat in the last bar, and it has to be three beats. Now I have a choice. I can either have it as a high E up here, E flat, or I can have it as a low one. Generally, at the end, you want it to climax. You want it to be rising during your piece, and it's going to reach a high climax point at that very last bar. So I'm going to have it on that high E flat. Okay, and it has to be three beats. I'm just going to get rid of this. Oops, my mistake. I'm just going to get rid of this rest because that doesn't need to be there because it's only three beats. All right, that's the start. I've actually started at the end. You don't actually have to do this in order. Sometimes it makes it easier to fill in certain points beforehand. Okay, but what I am going to do, I'm going to move on next to bars five and six. Now, in this case, I'm developing bars one and two. So I'm going to use a lot of the notes from bars one and two again. Also, I have to use, reuse my anacrusis. So I've got my anacrusis at the beginning here. I'm going to reuse it at the end. I could reuse the exact same notes, or I could change them, but it has to be that one beat upbeat to the next phrase. It has to be an upbeat less than one beat that leads us into the phrase beginning in bars five and six. I actually, I think I am going to reuse the same notes. It's, sometimes it's important to repeat ideas. It gives a sense of coherence to the music. So I've got my upbeat. And now I'm going to keep the rhythm from the the given first bar. So it's going to be crotchet, minim, and then two two quavers. All right. What will I? Have? I think I'll have my crotchet on B again because we've got our anacrusis, which goes G sharp A. It's naturally leading up to a B. So I'm going to have B flat rather. So I'm going to have my crotchet on B flat. Then I want to change it. I want to alter it. I want to. I don't want it to be the exact same as this one. So instead of jumping up to an E flat. I'm going to go down to an E-flat. I'm going to go down here. Just a slight little change. So I've altered it in some way, but I'm still using the same idea. I'm going to keep this rhythm. I'm going to still have two quavers. But because I've jumped down, I now need to try and come back up. So instead of going B, B-flat, uh, G, I'm going to go G, B-flat. OK. Next bar, I'm in bar 2. Again, I'm going to keep the exact rhythm they've given me. There's no reason to change it. The rhythm is really part of the overall feel of the piece. So I'm, I don't want to change it too much. I want to keep the ideas they've had. Um, I, I also, yeah, I, I think I might even keep it more or less the exact same. No, not the exact same. I'm going to change it slightly. So instead of going B, A, A, I'm just going to move B flat, A flat, A flat, rather. I'm just going to change that first note to a C. Just one little change. So it's going to go C, B flat, a flat. Okay, and now I'm going to have my rest, my crotchet rest in there as well, and my two quavers at the end. And for my two quavers at the end, I've already had one change in this bar, so I'm just going to make them the same. I'm going to use C, B flat again. Okay, in the next bar, bars uh, 7 and 8, I 
it has to modulate to the dominant, but I, I still want to have some sense of familiarity with the beginning. I don't want to sound like I've gone into a completely new piece of music. So I'm going to keep the same rhythm. I'm going to have all quavers in this bar, in bar um, 7, and then I'm going to keep this rhythm that they've used in bar 4, I'm going to use it in bar 8. So I'm going to have all quavers in bar 7, but I have to modulate to the dominant. So if I'm modulating to the dominant, I'm in E flat. If I was to write out the note to B flat, it would be E flat, F, G, A flat, B flat, C, D, E flat. My fifth note there was B flat. So, therefore, modulating to the dominant, I have to modulate to the key of B flat. As I mentioned in the previous video, if I want to work out which notes I need to change to modulate to B flat, I just count up. I find the fourth note of my current scale. So I'm in E flat, I count up to the fourth note. That was E flat, F, G, A flat. A flat is my fourth note, so I'm going to sharpen that A flat. If I sharpen that A flat, it becomes A natural now. So the only note I have to change to modulate to B flat is I have to change my A flat to an A natural. Now, as you can see, the notes have been coming down here. They've gone C, B flat. And if I was to copy this bar exactly, I would be going to A flat. But I'm not going to. I'm going to go to an A natural because I'm modulating. So I'm going to do an A natural. Okay. Just one little change. It's so easy to make. Once I've done that, I'm going to keep pretty much the same structure they've got above. They've gone straight down to a, uh, a G. I'm going to keep doing that. And um, you know what? I'm going to keep it pretty much the same again for a while. I'm going to go C, B flat again. Just like they've got it. And then I'm going down to my A natural. So I'm still using their idea, it's just that I've got an A natural now instead of that A flat. I don't want to use their idea exactly. I could keep going down the whole way, I could go right down. But I'm going to come back up. I'm going to start bringing it back up again just to change it a little bit. Here I'm still in the key of uh, B flat that I've modulated to. So I'm going to land on that B flat note right now. That's one of the benefits as well of going back up. I went from F to an A natural and then up to a a B flat. So that's my, my home note of the key I've just modulated to. I've modulated to B flat and I've landed on a B flat, B flat note. It's perfect. And I'll choose this little lower auxiliary note here. So I'm still in B flat. I've just gone B flat, A and back to B flat. Okay. So there's my modulation to the dominant. It's in there. All I have to do is figure out which key I was in, figure out which key the dominant was sharpen the appropriate note, and then I've still pretty much used the same ideas they've got here. I've just changed it at the end, instead of going straight down, I've gone down and come back up so that I would land just right on that B flat, land on my own note of my new key, and really emphasize that key. Alright, moving on. I need to have my crotch at rest. That way I'll, I'm set up nicely for my anacrusis, because I have to have that at the beginning of every phrase once it's been there. And what notes do I have for my anacrusis? Um, you know what, I'm in B-flat, so I'm going to use two notes from, B, from the chord of B-flat. I'm going to use F, and I am going to use D. So those are two notes in the chord of B-flat, so I've just gone B-flat, F, D. Those are notes of the chord of B-flat, so it really strengthens the sound of that chord. So next I'm at bar 9 and 10, I'm at my sequence. I've gone down, I've gone from B-flat, F to D, so I'm going to have a note somewhere around that D for my sequence to begin on. And you know what, that acts really nicely, because I'm modulating back to the key of E flat now, I'm modulating back to my home key. So since I'm on a D note, that's actually note 7, that's T in solfeggio terms of my home key, which is E flat. So I'm going to have it rise straight up to that E flat, and yeah, I'm going to start on E flat here. So it's gone really, really nicely, I've gone, I have my dominant chord here, B flat, F, D, and that D can now rise to the tonic note of my, the, the uh, yeah, the home note of my tonic chord, E flat, it's perfect. All right, and I'm going to keep this rhythm. I'm going to still use crotchet, minim, and two quavers. So I landed on a crotchet E flat, and I'm going to use just the notes of the chord E flat. So I'm going to use E flat, B flat, and for my quavers, I'm going to start with a uh, a G. So that's and E flat. So that's just all using the notes of the chord of E flat major. Makes it nice and easy. Um, because I'm doing a sequence, I have to use the same rhythm again in the next bar. It has to be almost exactly the same as this bar, just all the notes are moved up or down by one step. I'm going to move them down a step. So I'm moving my E down a step 
for this one, and I get D. Let's put my minimum. I'm going to move that B flat down a step. That was an E flat, wasn't it? Um, I'm going to move my B flat down a step to A flat. And my two quavers, I'm going to move this G down a step to F. I'm going to move this E flat down a step to D. Okay, so my sequence. Easily done. Very, very easy to do. Next bit, I'm going to keep that same rhythm of all quavers. Don't want to go changing it too much. And it has to be an imperfect cadence. So we're in the key of E flat, and it has to be an imperfect cadence going from chord 1 to chord 5. So that means going from the chord of E flat to the chord of B flat. So the strong beats in this bar, in bar 11, I want to outline the notes of the chord E flat. So I'm going to start with an E flat because I framed it nicely there. I've got an F and a D around it. So I'm going to start with an E flat. And I think I'll just keep going up. That way my next strong beat, B2, is going to be a G, which is also one of the notes of the chord of E flat. I'm going to keep going up because my next strong beat, B3, is a B flat, which is also one of the notes of the chord of E flat. And I'm just going to keep going like that. I'm going to bring this one back down so that my beat 4 falls on one of the, chord, one of the notes of the chord of E flat, which is a G. And I can go... Um, yeah, I'm going to go. I'm going to go up by a, a third day. I'm going to leap. Sometimes it's it's nice just to change it up a bit, have some leaps instead of just some steps. And that leap leaps between two of the notes of that chord of E flat. It leaps from G to B flat, so it's perfectly acceptable. You can use leaps. Stepwise movement is recommended for most of it, but you can le use leaps if they're between notes of a strong chord. The chord in this case is chord one, E flat. So you're leaping between the third of the chord and the fifth of the chord. And just to reiterate there again, we've really outlined the chord of E flat here because on all the beats, beat one we've got the root note of that chord, E flat. Beat two we've got the third of the chord, which is G. Beat three we've got the fifth of the chord, which is B flat. And beat four we've got the third of the chord again, which is G. So we've really outlined an E flat chord there. In this chord, I really want to outline the chord of B flat, which is the chord five for the imperfect cadence. Um, I've kind of led up here, so I'm leading from a G up to a B flat. I think what I'm going to have next is, I know it's, you think I'm in, I'm in chord 5, I really want to land on a, a note of chord 5, but I'm actually going to land on a C note here. The reason I'm doing that is, they've got this really good idea in the given melody. Remember, you really should take from the, as much as possible from what they've given you in the, in the opening four bars. And they use this idea here, where they start on a note, and then they repeat it. They, they go down by a quaver, and then repeat that note. So in the opening they've got G, F, F, They've also done it here. They've got B flat, A flat, A flat. It's an idea they've really used, and I'm going to use it too. I'm going to go C, B flat, B flat. And what that does is, we've still got our B flat chord. I mean, we've got our, our home note of B flat. It's just that it's kind of, it's held off for a while. We've got that C note first, and then it like resolves just half a beat later to that B flat. So we and we've used one of their ideas, which is really good it's to reuse the ideas again that they've given you. So we've got our chord 1, going to chord 5. It's, chord 5 has just been held off for that little half beat too long by having that C note at the, at the uh, on beat 1. Okay, we still want to keep our same rhythmic structure, so we're going to have a rest in here, and we're going to have our anacrusis of two quaver beats. Um, what notes will I use? I think I'll use... Well, I want, I want to lead up to... B again. So I think I'm going to reuse the notes that they used at the very beginning. I'm going to reuse that G, A flat. G, oops. Let's move that up to an A flat. Alright, we're at our beginning again, so we're at our bar 13, so I want to reuse notes from the beginning again. I want to develop bars 1 and 2 again. So, I think for bar 1, I'm going to start with the same way that they started at the beginning. I'm going to use that B flat, and I'm going to jump up to an E flat. I know I went down the last time, so I just want to do it slightly differently. And how I'm going to do it differently this time is instead of having B flat G like they've got here, I'm going to start with that G. Now, last time I went G B flat, so this time I'm going to go G A flat. And the reason I'm doing that is because that G A flat leads really nicely up to the B flat that they've got at the beginning of this bar. So I'm just going to reuse that B flat here. So I've got G, A, B flat. It leads up really, really nicely to that B flat note that they've got here. So it allows me to reuse some of that material, which is what I'm going to do. I'm going to have that B flat, 
a flat, a flat idea again. It's something they've used a lot in the beginning, and I want to reuse it to show that I'm I'm able to reuse ideas well, I'm able to develop ideas. Okay, and I've got my crotchet rest then. Next thing we want to do, we're we're building up. We've got a perfect cadence sending on dough here, so we're building up to that. So I have to try and think ahead now. I have to try and think about where I want to be at the beginning of my perfect cadence. Now my perfect cadence goes from chord five to chord one, and we've already got a dough for chord one. So I've got all I know is I'm going. What I know for certain is I'm going to have chord five in this bar in my second last bar. So how can I get from the note A flat to one of the notes of chord five in this two beats? That's what I'm really thinking. I'm thinking ahead here. I'm on the note A flat, and I want to move in some way in stepwise motion and end up on one of the notes of chord five. Now chord five is B flat, so the notes are B flat, D, and F. So I need to land on the opening beat of this bar on, the, on either the note B flat, the note D, or the note F, and I have to get there from this A flat. So here's how I'm going to do it. You can do it in lots of different ways. I'm just choosing this way to do it. I'm going to drop by step to a G and then come back up to that A flat which me leads me nicely, just as it did here, up to a B-flat right here. So now I'm on B-flat, which is the home note of the chord of B-flat. And remember, I really want to outline that uh, B-flat chord as much as possible. So, on my strong beats, the strongest beats of the bar are beats 1 and 3. So on beats 1 and 3, I'm going to use notes from the chord of B-flat. In both cases, I happen to use the home note, I happen to use the actual note B-flat. I could have used D or F on one of them, I just happened to use B flat, it's not a big deal either way. But what it does allow me to do is, if, I've, if I'm landing on B flat on B3, it leaves me just the right amount of space to go like this, it's building up to that E flat. I'm thinking, oh no, I've got a rest here, and I can't just have, it's, it's, it's got one more note to go to, uh, to the E flat. If that happens, really easy thing to do is frame the note. So you've got one note before it, then you play the, you've got one note below the E flat, then just play the note above it, and it's almost like a frame that it goes below it, above it, and then lands right on that E flat at the end. Okay, so that's the melody, that's what we've got. What I want to do next is just quickly play you the melody so that you can hear what it sounds like. <laughs> 